Hello and welcome to another episode of Random Musings. Uh, this is season two, overall episode seventeen, but episode five of uh, season two. Um, thank you for all the love so far. Please uh, rate us on uh, all the podcast platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts, etc. And if you're watching it on YouTube, please do the thing: like, share, subscribe. Uh, another very, very much, much, very much uh, awaited episode. Uh, been wa- meaning to speak to him on. so many different topics for uh, last many months since i envisioned this idea of random musings uh, give it up for uh, kautik shivas hey, hey so good to be here man kv hi kautik hi 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 let's do this i am very very excited very excited uh, let me start by my uh, the first thing i always want to talk to you about because i keep telling all my colleagues and everyone that i i as a person i'm not very um, envious or like jealous of what other people are doing in life in general yo and it happens a lot in like freelance life where you're like oh uska special aa gaya oh uska netflix ho gaya something 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 yeah it's called But, scrolling through instagram yeah it's <laughs> it's just called being online <clears throat> the probably the only person i'm envious of probably uh, is you and i'll tell you why because you've written a book kato and i i always keep every time you talk about red card or like all your writing things i am like man this one uh, lifelong ambition that i've had like right from my school days is to write a book and every time someone like someone i know personally releases a book and you're like damn matlab how how did this person take so much time out and like wrote a whole book and you kato you do, you not just you're not just an author but you're also of course a stand up comedian which is uh, like azim said in the previous episode that which is essentially also being a writer in like the core is is being a writer and you write a lot of sketches and like other a lot of shit over so many years uh, so uh, i want to start with your journey as a writer and is there a difference when you write uh, like when you write for stand up when you write for screen or what what does it entail in all these different kinds of writing that you do ah uh, it's a great question and um i think it's the one thing that i grapple with the most um across all the things because <clears throat> like uh, unlike a lot of other uh, people like i i i get very um uh, greedy when it comes to writing i'm like yeah, i just i want to do everything i want to do like books i want to do uh, stand up i want to do screen writing all of that and uh, for me it started with books like the whole journey all of this began with the impulse that i wanted to write a book i wanted to be a novelist and a lot of ways i feel like i'm born 50 years too late because <laughs> you know um the prime of the book reading era is is a little past but um but nevertheless like i wanted to be a novelist first and um the whole idea is that the difference between books stand up and screen like eventually you when you start doing all of them you start realizing that they're very different mediums each one of them and different in in various ways like for example the the first most um uh, different thing that you'll notice is the control you have so the level of control you have over a book is almost complete because it's you completely in charge with what goes on the page and no one gets to see it until years later sometimes with stand up you get uh, you are in control of the writing but you're constantly getting feedback from an audience and without that feedback you don't even know whether you've written stand up because it could just be poetry and you don't know it <laughs> so so you need the audience to be almost a collaborator with you on that journey when it comes to screenwriting it's completely different because it's almost the most collaborative thing that you could do it is a team sport you are one part of a much larger team and you need the whole team to function before your writing gets the the uh, sort of like it comes into being so um in in that sense it's the most different again the other thing that about it is the fact that the modes you get into when you're writing these things when you're writing a book it's um you have a sincerity towards the story you have a respect for characters you have a respect for meaning right when you're writing stand up it's the exact opposite you have no respect for anything right you have like you're being the most irreverent the most flippant 
almost nothing has meaning and when it comes to screenwriting you are beholden to somebody else's vision so in all of these uh, different forms like it's a it's a lot of um, different things that you have to uh, different modes of thinking that you have to access and a lot of times like those wires get crossed for me so <laughs> it's a you spend a lot of time kind of just being like okay okay, okay this is not a screen writing job it's a stand up piece let's write it like that uh, it's not a stand up piece it's a book let's write it like that so uh, it's a varied thing and and i think like it exercises a bunch of 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 different parts of me which i really enjoy and uh, i would never give any of them up wow one well, um small one of the things you said is the kind of control that you have when you are writing a novel or a book yeah um, but um, i am more curious as someone who has thought about it and have i've done nothing about it but one of the things that a lot of people feel a challenge of writing a book is to find the right publisher and find uh, the right platform to you know to, for the reach of the book and a lot of people complain that at some point during the book writing process you start getting feedback from these publishers who are like oh they should this won't fly this doesn't have yeah. enough hooks uh, did you face any of this or or like uh, i i thankfully i had wonderful editors and my publisher was uh, penguin and and the thing is that i had also i think with me i was also my worst my own worst critic so by the time i sent red card to uh, penguin it was a third draft so i had written the book three times from page 1 till the end and i think a little bit of that helped because the feedback from them was uh, grammatical um and there was there was one section where i did get a note saying ki uh, maybe this maybe you could relook at this section because uh it's not fully the thought that you're having is not it's not fully fleshed out and i thought that was a very good suggestion and and it improved the book um uh, but apart from that my experience of it and it's a very limited experience i have to say but my experience of it was um uh, in that sense pretty smooth like it wasn't i think and i think the the stars aligned in terms of the content of the book and the um uh, the audience it was made for and and how how i had written it versus how the editor saw it so those things came together for me so but i have heard of friends who've had the other ex, uh, experience where a book was commissioned without a draft being written and in which case then there was a little bit more feedback there's a little more collaboration a little more like um, you know we felt like the brief of you know your idea does not match the product uh, things like that so yeah at least in my experience it was a little different so i'll ask this for myself but uh, i'll make it sound like i'm asking on behalf of all the audience members <laughs> is that if someone wants to write a book what are the like in within a minute or something like just bullet points what are the things that you'll ask them to do that you know do this like if someone says stand up you say go hit open mic do this do that right but if you want to be an author what are the steps that you would say uh okay as there's a lot of stuff in it but i'll try to condense it so um the first thing that i would tell you is that remember it is it's not a sprint it's a marathon a book is 100% a marathon and um one of the things that writing a book dispels you off is this notion of inspiration because there are a lot of pages to fill and you have to show up every single day and fill those pages um so try to try to have that discipline of landing up at your desk and writing um at least making some progress if not a stipulated amount of words or pages or whatever but at least try to write every single day because it it will give you that momentum that you need to finish the book um the next thing i would tell you is and this is this works for me other people have a very different uh, opinion on all these things so i'll tell you from my perspective what works for me was was to relieve myself of this pressure of writing the perfect book because a lot of times what happens is that in the pursuit of this perfection you don't end up writing anything at all because ideas are brilliant and perfect over here and there's always a loss of transmission as as it comes out so the way i relieved myself of that pressure was to think in terms of drafts so write a first draft no matter what the quality just get to the emotion of your book the reason why you're writing it you can always refine it over time and over drafts so um that helped me a lot and the third thing uh, or let me say it like this the next thing i would say is that 
um, write what moves you. Don't worry about you know ये market में चलेगा ये public ये पढ़ रहा है वगैरह वगैरह. There's a hundred different things that you could look at. But if you're writing a book and you're spending this much time on it and you're spending this much effort on it and it really takes all of that, it's an endurance task almost. If you're doing all of those things, then you might as well write something that you truly believe in. Like um, Red Card is a book that I wrote about my experiences playing football in school. It's a very specific, mm-hmm. narrow slice of experience. But I felt very passionately about it and I really wanted to capture that particular moment in time. And I didn't really think about all the other factors and um and that helped me at least finish the book because you feel so strongly about it so those are few of the things that i would tell you and then apart from that um keep reading a lot keep working on your craft write a lot of words it doesn't have to be a novel but write words so you'll you'll find an ear for your own writing uh, uh, your own sort of rhythms wow one of the things that uh, you said in the beginning that that i can't uh, stop thinking about is that you said you uh, you were born around 5 6 decades later because the prime the prime of the book reading era was was then um, which is also something i keep thinking about uh, although in a much smaller uh, time span uh, because a lot of our audience members keep asking us you know uh, recommend books what do you read when do you read when do you get time to read etc etc what i was thinking very recently is that when we were doing like i was doing my engineering from 2004 to 8 okay mm. in those four years um, most of our free time uh, was spent there was no social media there was no smartphone to kill your time so you yeah. were either talking to your friend going out for beer or watching a movie or or something on the hard disk or or <laughs> or or sitting and reading reading was a legend past time yeah which is which i don't think is happening now which is very understandable it's not a criticism of the new uh, generation that's coming now uh, so people legit have a lot of like a lot of options to entertain themselves like they can go to netflix or amazon like amazon prime or youtube etc so quite obviously time being spent on books is going down which is very understandable but uh I want to talk to you about a lifetime of reading because I think both you and I have grown up reading. I mean, and 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 when I say reading, I also am assuming on your behalf is that we've read all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's just like random magazines keep uh, kept in our houses to like uh, random books that we have stumbled upon or books that we have dedicatedly gone bought, came back read, um, newspapers, man, all sorts of things. We 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 we've been readers. Uh, so what, i want to talk to you about your perspective of a lifetime of reading and reading in general and what have what evolution have you seen as a reader and a writer um so yeah i mean as a as a reader like i think you're right i think the reading has sort of it's difficult to read now i felt it myself having written books loving books i still find it a little hard to you know uh switch from um from the the fast paced dopamine hit thing of scrolling on social media versus like the slower more leisurely act of reading and the other thing i feel about this is that um i think it's 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 harder to read because reading is hard it's an active pursuit versus the passive pursuit of uh, viewing content right you're not engaged in creating imaginatively the worlds that you have to do when you're reading a book and it's so much harder to do that because so many different mental faculties are being used right your concentration your imagination your uh, your capacity for empathy all of those things so um it is it has become a little harder and i feel like just um the thing about uh, reading and and being a reader for this long one of the things that it's done is i feel uh, for me is that the best thing about books is that they give you multiple perspectives on life because every single book is a simulation of a life lived mm. right so it you can live a life without having to go through the amount of time and torture it takes to actually do it and you can see how decisions play out in real time it's a simulation of all those things right so if you're an you know you pick up the classics you will find all the big th- big themes of life right you will find 
everything that you would possibly experience in life, you'll find it in these books. And which is why they survive through time, because they have the same sort of essence that uh, humanity has at its core. And uh, through those books, you'll be able to see multiple perspectives, multiple ways of looking at the world and empathize with these characters in, in ways that you would find it difficult to empathize with people. And then once that starts happening, then you start seeing that oh, other people have these same sort of perspectives and things like that. So um, that's one of the best things that's happened. The other thing that that I think reading has done for me in 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 a large uh, amount is the fact that you know, uh, KV, I, I should ask you this. In fact, have you gone through this phase where you know initially you you're reading a lot of fiction, and then you feel you know what I want to get to the truth. You know, I want to know how the world works. So then you start reading nonfiction, right? You read like this whole swathe of nonfiction and then you come full circle and you go like, you know what, if I want to really find out the truth, I need to read fiction again <laughs> because there are truths in fiction that you cannot say in nonfiction yeah. because these are subjective truths, mm -hmm. but these are truths that are, um, that exist. And when they find the right reader, they are so resonant, so important that it kind of, it kind of alleviates a loneliness. You didn't even know you felt, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you read this, a passage in a book and you're like, I can't believe that another human being has had the same experience. Mm -hmm. That's unbelievable. I thought I was the only one. And, uh, this is true for all art, but it's happened the most times with books for me. So, um, that kind of. Uh, and, and the in interesting thing about it is that it's a sort of universal feeling that sitting here in Mumbai, I can read a book from a guy who was writing in London in, in an, in a different century mm. and still it sort of connects and it makes sense, which is the other thing, right. That you realize about reading, like for the longest time, I used to try to read philosophy and it used to be like walking into a wall repeatedly. Mm. Right. You do, just don't get it. It's dense. It's difficult. What are these ideas? Why do people like these people? Because I, I don't get it at all. So keep feeling that. Then I forget where I read this or how it happened or what, where this idea came from. But the idea was very simple that, um, generally speaking, philosophy or all art is essentially a conversation being had by people across time. So they're all reacting and responding and talking to each other. Mm -hmm. They're listening to an idea from a different time and going like, you know what? I think about this same thing in this way. Mm -hmm. And when you see that chain mm -hmm. forming, then these ideas start becoming uh, interesting and they start becoming sensible to you. They're like, okay, okay, okay. So this is basically a response to that. And that is a response to this. And, and all of these things fall into place. So. To, to understand that kind of history and to understand that conversation that's taking place across time, that was a very interesting and mind expanding thing to experience. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So it's wonderful about, uh, it's wonderful the part where you said that, uh, you know, you read a paragraph and it hits you so hard that, you know, someone else has gone through the same thing. And one of the very, uh, one very basic analogy of that is when people scroll Instagram and they see such con relatable content. Relatable. Like three things Delhi boys face in Mumbai. They also relate. But the difference here is the maybe the magnitude of uh, how much it hits you. Because there you feel like, oh, ha, oh I water nice, nice. And there it's, you know, so uh, that is the difference probably when people say, what joy do you get out of reading compared to the other, you know. It's that specificity of a particular thought or emotion that is just unbelievably like, because the really great artists, right? They're able to, um, sort of sift through the multiple experiences or thoughts they've had and pull out the one thing that has eluded everybody else mm -hmm. and to, and to present it in a way that's accessible to everyone else. Like, because thoughts are extremely difficult to pin down. They're constantly in motion. It's like stabbing water and somehow these guys are able to do it and present it to you in a way that is so clear and it's so beautiful. That's, that's one of the true joys. Oh man. 
Uh, but Kautu, we've talked about writing, reading, and I know you said uh, people should, like if you want to be a writer, you should write a lot. You should write every day. But you're a bad texter, right? Which is which is also <laughs> writing in some shape and form. And I'll tell you my perspective. I uh, in 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 this uh, department of communication, um, I am uh, I can do video calls. Okay, I yeah. can meet you in person. Yeah, uh, I can maybe off sometime text you. I dread phone calls. I'm very like, oh, phone are a shit. <laughs> How do we avoid this phone? Like, what can we just like? My, I I found voice note to be the nice, optimum this thing where you know there is emotion, there's less effort, and you know conversation be okay, and there's no phone calls. I can reply till whenever. So I want to know how talk to you about texting and what do you think? Uh, how are how are you with texting? Uh, like. man i think if you have actually solved a lot of my issues i think i'm going to switch to voice notes i didn't i, I didn't it didn't occur to me that that's a that's a that's a beautiful mid ground because for me um i feel texting is the biggest problem for for me personally like i'm a very poor texter like um uh, unless it's like a a work related thing and like i you know uh, i'm in the middle of it or whatever it is then i'm i'm fine but a lot of times what happens to me is um i i don't know if this happens to a lot of people or if it happens to you but sometimes when i have to respond to a text i have to be in the right mindset does that make sense yeah right yeah. like because you are in the middle the, the thing about technology is that it it's fully there with you all the time and it's intrusive and it and you're not necessarily in the frame of mind to um you're busy doing something else and then you're sucked out of it to to then respond so you're in you're in two places at the same time right so it takes me a long time to just kind of get my mindset okay what do i have to say over here now that's just me and i have this low level anxiety with like um, that kind of thing and also sometimes i'm like okay does this happen to you where you're different people with different people Yeah, yeah, you have persona, right? So you're like, ah, shit, I have to get into that persona now because our texting history is like that. Yeah. <laughs> so now I can't be a different guy. <laughs> so, so then it takes a bit of time. Um, and the other thing about it is that I, I sometimes genuinely forget. So, I get very absorbed in things, a little clumsy and forgetful in that sense. So what happens is that uh, I'll see the message, right? It pops up on my uh, notification screen. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. I'll I'll respond in in two days or uh, in in two minutes, and then two days have passed, mm -hmm. right? And then you're like, shit, mm -hmm. uh, got you know, got to start the whole thing by uh, yeah. saying sorry for the message, and and then you sort sort of scroll up, and your entire conversation is sorry for this late message, but <laughs> so uh, I find I find that a little bit of a, you know, something, Gavi. i think i would have preferred to be born uh, 50 years before or maybe even 100 years before because then that would mean no text messages only letters yeah right yeah. love letters because yeah. uh it, it's it it took weeks for anything to happen which is the optimum amount of time if you ask me <laughs> i don't like this uh, it's too fucking fast for me I, i i think i'm old that's the baseline of it oh so but yeah i completely relate to you uh, that uh, you know you have to go into a certain mindset to reply yeah. to people and it's also based on so many factors like what is that equation with, what is the equation with that person what is the context of that conversation like if it's your school friend just randomly tell me ha bhai ha to to batata but yeah. if it's like a work thing which is going on you have to be like oh yes oh, yes oh, wait wait this can't be so, Dude, <laughs> and and you know the more uh, connections people make right the more this tends to happen ki you have to your your genuinely different um, different selves are being exhibited to different situations people etc right and it's difficult to um, like when you meet a person in in person mm. you can see uh, aha this is another thing by the way of texting which is that because it's just a text right a lot of the Uh, non verbal stuff gets lost which yeah. is a lot of where the con communication happens like writing is uh, writing you would imagine that writing and texting is the same thing but it's very different because um uh with writing there is way more time yeah and 
you are not trying to communicate yourself to anybody yeah. right like but with a text it's like i have to tell you that um you know a lot of texts they seem very formal but i don't mean it that way yeah because if you heard me say it you'd be like okay yeah that's he's just that he's being nice about that but it sounds very fucking okay i do this a lot i leave the uh, last full stop mm-hmm. from my message off mm-hmm. because it feels like if i put the full stop then i come across as very like mm-hmm. formal and mm-hmm. you know this this conversation is not between friends it's between colleagues mm-hmm. and i don't want to come off like that so i leave that last full stop off i find it very jarring when someone leaves the full stop in because it's like you know you ask them hey can you come here and someone says i can't full stop yeah yeah and i'm like shit did i offend you i'm sorry <laughs> yeah so yeah this is what people say na when they uh, one version of this i can't period and yeah it, they, <laughs> they yeah. Uh, they, the conversation is over but kodu you know i used to face this challenge uh, and that's why i used to deal a lot with emoticons where you'd randomly add emoticons to just say that hey like i can't and then that sad smiley to say ki hey everything is good between us yeah. it's just that i can't you know yeah And that is why another reason why i moved to voice notes where it's like hey i can't do it but you know uh ping me next time so at least that is you know that emotion part is got try it dude i think i think you've solved a lot of my issues i think i think genuinely i have i don't know why voice notes as a major part of communication didn't yeah. strike me this is mind blowing <laughs> but kadu one of the recurrent themes in our conversation so far has been aging okay mm-hmm. and and era and when we were born and etc of late i also realized that what is happening right now is uh, aging is something that most humans want to deny yeah some level they are like nahi 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 they're still cool they're still young but it's a reality it's a reality you can't you can't refuse to believe it's it's happening your body and you know a lot of things that you could do a few years back you can't do now your priorities are changing i tell you one uh, very recently i was in delhi okay and uh, we went to a pub kind of a thing my friends and i and the music was very loud okay we couldn't talk so we were like ah kahi aur jaate hain baat nahi kar pa rahe that's how it started so we moved to another place which was too exclusive okay it was like as a upar baith ke ekdam nice lounge everything like they knew me so they arranged one nice this thing and i'm like yaar koi dikh hi nahi raha hai music then we realized that we are looking at a very optimum set of requirements <laughs> like there should be music not too loud but no music also it, it it has to be there in the background like you can hum when you want to like so yeah. and then you come back to the conversation you want people but you don't want like too many people but you you want to see people on their team so that, and then we kept noting our this thing and i'm like dude what are we doing are we aging are we are we like those old like nahi yahi chahiye like you know how have you like uh, are you coming to terms with aging or like what's happening in your life Yeah dude no you know something the thing that you just described right uh, i think that is one part the one big slice of aging which is that you find out over time your preferences mm-hmm. and and you kind of also like i think the best way to find them out is to uh, be that person when you're younger who goes and does all the v- various versions of these things right and then you realize okay i really like this i really don't like this i really like this i really don't like this and and then you find out your preferences um for me uh i i i i don't think i'm fully like i think the pandemic was a very odd period of time because i felt like i felt like those two years i aged and a lot of things changed for me like i got married right two weeks before the pandemic i moved out of the house two weeks before the pandemic i started um you know living on my own all of those things Uh, along with wife obviously and all of those things happened and then the pandemic also happens which was i think i mean the end of the world as it was advertised at the time it was the scariest particular period of time and because you're stuck at home it feels like time is frozen but then two years later i started looking at myself in the mirror and the entire undercarriage of my beard is white mm. right you you realize that you went from whatever 28 to 30 you like things happened right um and i think also you, people generally once you re- reach that 
three decade mark i think there is a definite like acknowledgement that um until then i feel like you feel like the time is infinite eternity is is real all of that is going to happen right and at 30 you start you kind of start assessing you've experienced a chunk of life and now you're like okay there's um there's like a there's like a finite amount of time left for for you to be in your prime to do your best stuff and that acknowledgement happens you get a little existential um and also the the other thing that happens with aging is the fact that yeah like you said like you have to um there is a process of accepting it which is what is called aging gracefully right um you have to like i was talking to, to uh, thakur the other day varun thakur and i was telling him ki you know when when i was in college all the slang used to get downloaded automatically into my brain you know like i was like a new model of a phone and they just gave you the updates and it used to update the phone in the night while you slept and then it had all the things now i feel like you know that model where they, they like you have to manually go and <laughs> download the update <laughs> and pretty soon they're just not going to make the updates for me like that's what i feel like like uh, i don't get all the lingo immediately like i have to google it that's the first sign that you're that you're um, heading to a thing um but i think like the 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 other things about it is that i think i've gotten better at things hmm. Hmm. i'll give you the uh, like one of the simplest examples like i think that because you have a better understanding of yourself and that you you've done a bunch of stuff and they've not worked out <laughs> so you have a better understanding of of how to do those things and how to manage your expectations doing those things um so for example writing for me got easier mm. because i knew that um like i knew myself better i knew the excuses i would come up with mm. myself and so you can counteract those mm. i knew because of your experience you know how your writing is and how to improve it and, and all of that stuff and you also know what works for you and what doesn't so those kind of aspects are 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 the true sort of like when you start moving away from uh you know merely knowledge to you start going towards experience and then eventually hopefully if you are worthy wisdom that's the true joy of 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 like the each day getting going by dude also kv has this has that experience happened to you where each year goes by faster <laughs> and right? especially like you said because of pandemic you know i don't know what's happening right <laughs> like i don't know where how which year what dude fully fully like the, that 2020 2021 i it's a blur it's a blur i, I just can't tell you it feels like i i was um, simultaneously frozen in time and i skipped those years yeah yeah odd very recently there was uh, 20 years of dil chahta hai and i could not believe <laughs> i just could i'm like no this cannot be happening can we get a day something yeah. so the other day i was i was dancing I, I, there was a we were at a party okay and um, dj is playing songs we are dancing and he plays koi kahe mm. okay so i'm i'm dancing to koi kahe kehta rahe ki um uh it's it's a song about like coming of age and like hum logo ki uh, thokar mein hai ye zamana right yeah. and i was like dude i'm no longer zamana i am thokar yeah like that's that's where you're at like it's done that song is old you are old it's oh, just man. surprising yeah but uh, got uh, are you enjoying this slower pace of life with age uh, is is it happening with you or were you sometimes you've accepted that this is how life is it's much much slower and i'll try and explain this to the audience uh, when we say fast or slow okay um, it's it's very it's it's sometimes it's sometimes literal also but when you're young especially in your teens and 20s things happen i'm assuming you're one yeah. of those people who, uh, who whoever is watching this or listening to it is that you're doing things you should okay let me digress a bit when when kautuk said that when we now at this age in our 30s understand our preferences 
it comes with the assumption that you've experienced a lot of things to at least see what you like and you don't what you don't like one of those people who right from the beginning was like no i don't like this and i don't know this <laughs> then i don't know maybe at least so we can at least proudly say that in our teens and 20s we did a bunch of things we did a lot of things and then we realized okay this isn't working for me and this is working for me uh, so which basically means when you're doing a lot of things your life is a lot of pace you're doing this you're doing that you're doing but at, at in your 30s like kothuk said you you're sort of like okay i'm going to do this i'm going to do it well uh, i'm going to do it slower um, things start happening a little slower uh, for lack of a better word kothuk uh, would you mind shedding light prakash dalte hain about like slower pace of life have you have you noticed it is it happening with you you know something the way you phrased it i think is great okay and i'll tell you I'll, let me give you an analogy so i started going back to the gym and um i'll tell you the contrast and it's very relevant to this conversation so earlier when i used to go to the gym my obsession was how do i get results quickly how do i hit more reps okay i i want to do like 20 reps 30 reps of the thing i want to do it quickly over time i've realized that when you go to the gym you have to do fewer reps but do them really well concentrate the fuck out of them okay enjoy the workout and the other thing was i don't care about getting to fitness immediately i wanted to be slow but i wanted to be long lasting right you start realizing those things um the value of i am a big 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 believer that you need to experience everything slowly because that's where experience is i'll give you an example like every time i travel uh i try to make it a point to walk in places when you walk in a new place you will be amazed by how much sensory bombardment you get right you are actually seeing the place you're constantly emotionally also uh agile because you're like what's next what's next when you're in a car it passes you by because it's that fast you barely register anything no matter how different the place is no matter how strange unique etc it's just going to pass you by and it's not your experience is just going to be that of sitting in the car that's what speed feels like it it you miss uh the the nuance that is where the the beauty and richness of the thing is right it's the same thing about like food for example that right? you can only taste food when you eat it slowly you can only digest a thing when you do it slowly right so experience is the same way so i feel like and which is one of the other things that any time i'm in something or invested in something i try to take it as slow as possible um do less reps but do them well essentially and um and and yeah that that sort of like foresight of being like okay i want to do this for longer i like this so let me not rush it why would you rush it what a terrible thing that is like you're you like a thing and you're and you're tearing through it mm. no if you like a thing do the opposite just take it so slow just enjoy every little part of it um and i think that's true for events and things but it's also true for life in general that i i i think that life by by itself without you doing anything by the way like a pair of earphones that you place in your in your pocket it will get tangled up and it does speed up by itself just by responsibilities and passage of time which is why it's even more imperative that you take time out to slow it down mm. and i think like i learned this lesson because of um, like just you know uh, like for example kevi like i'm sure you've had this experience too right as a creative person like you eventually reach a point where you feel like your well has gone dry mm. you know that well of creativity the place where you're drawing your ideas from it's gone dry mm. and the only way to replenish it is to slow everything down mm. right is to like take a moment away from the breakneck speed of your schedule and your life and your commitments and everything and be like look i need to experience things again to kind of find a stable ground because otherwise life just feels like you're in a in a in a room where there's an earthquake taking place all the time so mm. i i think like it's 
it's necessary for you to also process things mm-hmm. you know um a lot of the people like a lot of times i've had this experience people have this experience where um a lot of things happen and then like fuck where did all this time go mm-hmm. right or oh, the time was the same you mm-hmm. took it like everybody else one second at a time it's mm-hmm. just that you didn't process it so when you process all these things and you suddenly realize that you have more memories you have more experiences you have a more v- v- like like a depth of experiences better than a breadth of experience in my opinion at least but um you you touched this creative part in the middle part which uh, which is a challenge that a uh, lot of freelancers uh, so to speak yeah. uh, face because you're like Uh, in the space regardless of it being slow or fast um, you do need to take a pause and wonder like who are you what are we doing what what are we uh, like you said when you reach especially with age at 30 you're like okay uh, i now have limited amount of time all your heroes are now younger than you and yeah. the football, <laughs> football fan got to i only you will understand if this mm. like relate to it the most is when we were in school and it was uh the age of michael owen and and all you're like michael owen and gerard and like yeah and then um, uh and now when i look at the uh, sala and like everyone and you're like <laughs> okay you know what i mean you're like oh shit because when you're a kid at some point regardless of who you are where you are one person of your brain at least tells you that you can be that person yes you can be tendulkar when you grow up you yes. can you know you there's something there yes but now like, no you there's no way you can meet and look at any oh but anyway back to the point katuk so you were saying um, you know living with this space and especially as a creative person one challenge and and this is the conversation that happens with amongst a lot of us offline and i want to bring it to this episode is where uh, you keep asking are you being authentic to who yeah. you are uh, especially uh, as an artist because uh, in the beginning you said the one of the pressures of writing writing is that kya chal raha hai kya nahi chal raha hai main kya karu should i do what i love doing or should i do what market mein chal raha hai or audience loves um, yeah. and we have the privilege actually we are one of those rare jobs where we can actually afford to do what we want to do and like almost every salary job in the world uh, so do you do you face this issue where do you constantly uh, voluntarily take a pause and you are like am i being authentic or am i being true to myself i to feel like i've i live in that pause mm-hmm. i think like i've um, <laughs> i think i've i've spent more time answering that question than doing other work mm-hmm. um uh, because i think yeah for i mean by the way this completely depends on the type of person you are mm-hmm. the type of work you want to do etc etc like it's it's not a it's not a thing everyone uh, you know is concerned about or cares about or or not or, and, not, and not even necessarily does it matter to a lot of people and neither should it it's a thing that is um your personal makeup and at least my understanding of it so far has been that uh, there is this the mantra of our age is be yourself that's the thing that people tell you quite often what they don't tell you is how mm. and what does that mean mm. right so now my feeling is that there are there are two things that right? there's one be yourself and then the other is create yourself mm. so or like there's find yourself and create yourself right because people assume that there is a better self of you to find which is inside mm. and if you just cut out the bullshit then you will reach like it's the statue inside the marble right the the person that you are inside i i don't think so i don't know because you dig deep and you might find a worse person <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so you might as well do the opposite which is create yourself and now what that is is obviously going to be subject to your particular desires and and ambitions but i feel like my life has always been about like I, I don't think I'm innately good at anything. Not a single thing am I innately good at. And I say this with full confidence because just like a week back 
I saw a video called How to Walk Properly, and I realized I was doing that wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, 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 I agree. Yeah. So, um, you know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's a uh, at least in my life, I've realized I'm not innately good at anything, and but I have also realized that through application and sort of like effort and discipline, you can get good at anything, mm. and sort of like so for me the. authenticity becomes expressing that like um my preferences but and and also the particular vision i had and the effort i put to reach that point or, or that or try to get as close to it as possible so um and i feel like the 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 thing about authenticity is at least for me extremely important because at the end of the thing uh, i always judge most decisions by this uh, by a by a metric of regret more than a metric of pleasure yeah. you know I, like at the end of my time would i look back and regret it <laughs> and i'm like if i do then i'm not fucking doing it so and i think that's that's my only that's the only way i get to find out what my authentic or like um sort of like what my preference is in in a in a matter i don't have very many strong preferences but uh, for the few i do i'm i try to stick as close to them as possible because i uh, i again it, it ties in with that idea that time is finite and you got to put time into the things that you want to do uh, truly like that move you and you feel uh, that if you do them they'll fulfill you in some way it could be and and it fulfillment doesn't have to just be that emotional fulfillment it could be all sorts of different um, versions of it social emotional all sorts of different things so and what i mean by that is that this is not just contained to work if being with your friends and family is the thing that is at the core of your being screw everything else and do that you don't have to be in any forbes under whatever uh, forbes under 30 30 whatever the fuck that is like being true to yourself is to question a lot of the assumptions that society comes with mm. and saying which ones apply to me which ones are redundant which ones are extraneous all of that stuff and and only realizing that most of these things are made up most of these things people believe in them which is why they exist but that's not that doesn't mean that they are physical laws of nature so if you feel otherwise express that sentiment because you would be surprised how many other people feel the same way mm. and that's that comes back to art where we were talking about the thing that the great artists are able to express that one particular thought and it's so resonant with so many people because everyone feels it but no one quite is able to articulate it in that way Mm-hmm. one um, it, one one of the points that hit me hard in the middle is when you said when, when you are trying to create yourself one thing that you need is the discipline and the hard work behind it and this is something that i have grappled with a lot um, in life as a student as a as a professional and now as a as an artist or whatever is the thing between talent and hard work yeah um, because i like for, personally i believe i have never worked hard for for anything and if i if i do have to pick one regret it might be this key right from like it entrance to uh, uh, you know at job and some some of things have happened things have always happened no <laughs> <laughs> um, i i feel i lack discipline like when you said that you know sitting and writing i don't know i have never done that and ideally we should the point is you understand that i should do it so there is no like it's not that you are anti this say no this doesn't work uh, yeah. You know, yeah 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 work out every day you will, you will be a fitter healthier person you know that but you're not doing it yeah uh, every every aspect of life um, so there is always this thing about talent versus hard work and i believe that you need some sort of a combination to sort of achieve uh, things in life or whatever but now i want to know your opinion about talent versus hard work or like inspiration versus discipline Oh, I I am uh, like this is one one strong opinion that I have, <laughs> which is that I am very much in the camp of hard work and discipline over <clears throat> talent and inspiration, and I think mostly it's because I don't have the other two. Um, and <laughs> inspiration comes very 
you know it's, i i feel like inspiration is that thing that only artists get away with you don't hear sales people going like hey i had inspiration nahi aaya yaar sales nahi hua like they get on with the job because they have to and um there's a thing that i've realized which is that inspiration walks into the room the minute you sit down to write mm. the minute you're in you know there's a <clears throat> there's a concept called the flow state right and the flow state is where time suspends and you you are in that moment and you're fully focused and you're relaxed and you're enjoying it right and that's what inspiration when people talk about inspiration that's what they they talk about and you can achieve that thing just by sitting down and writing it takes you 5 minutes to warm up and then eventually once you're in it you're in the you're in the stream and you're floating and that's what inspiration feels like to me i don't particularly i don't have i have some moments where there's like a lightning in a bottle you you're scrolling on your phone at 2 in the morning and suddenly there's a thing and you open your notes folder and you write something yeah that happens but if you relied on that you would not produce very much uh all my heroes have been <laughs> uh we've got a <laughs> spectator um all my heroes have been people who've produced a lot of work who've who've sat at the desk and they've done the job and they've had a lot of output and i feel the same way i feel like there is i don't particularly bother myself with talent i have ideas and i want to squeeze out as many of them as possible as quickly as possible because things are finite um and i feel like yeah i'm sure i'm sure there is there is room for innate talent mm-hmm. like if i if i took up basketball at my 5 foot 9 mm-hmm. right i'm not going to have the same uh, results as the dude who's got 6 foot 6 uh, who's got a 6 foot 6 inch frame mm-hmm. right there's just going to be a difference in in quality in that sense but mm-hmm. a lot of the other things let me put it this way hmm. everyone is born or has constraints in life hmm. you're going to be constrained one way or the other it could be anything it could be monetary it could be emotions it could be physical whatever it is you are everyone has their own constraints hmm. and at least believing that um through hard work you can there are a few things in your control and the things that are out of your control you anyway cannot change so you might as well start focusing on the things you can mm. and that's where i come from so yeah. um there is a there is a, a a very good book it's called the growth mindset it's by i forget who it is by but that's i think the name of the book and when i read it i was like yeah this is it this is exactly it this is what i'm this is what my philosophy is because uh, essentially what that tells you is this that there is um uh between talent and hard work if you work hard at least you will put in more effort to overcome some of the challenges that the talented person kind of stops at because they're like that's i guess the limit of my talent because everyone is going to face challenges and if you are solely reliant on your talent then you're going to stop trying when the going gets really tough Mm-hmm. because beyond talent you need all of those other things you need persistence and you need discipline and you need uh, determination and the ability to overcome these things right uh, and luck you need that more than anything else so um i i that's that's where i come from completely agree um okay we'll quickly touch upon two topics uh, patok uh, because these two i've saved for the end because i am feel very strongly about both of these so i thought we'll talk yeah. about it uh, let me start with uh, opinions and yeah. about yeah. Uh, i personally feel that i don't have opinions yeah. I, <laughs> Same. I, i just feel like uh, when i meet someone with lot of strong opinions i feel very like should i also have yes yes you know, especially uh, and there are again us maybe there are like levels some people have opinions about like larger things in life like right left and all that some people have opinions about almost everything yeah like this bag should be brown or this uh, yeah. wall should be, this curtain should be closed for everything yeah i feel like i'm just okay with 
everything. Things, yeah. Almost yeah. everything. And, and I keep asking myself saying, okay, because someone recently pointed out saying, oh, so then you'll never take a stand. And uh, no, but I said, no, I have my value systems in place. Like I know at, at some level, I know, okay. Uh, but a- anything that I don't like, I, my mind says, this doesn't fit with who I am. Yeah. Uh, this in absolute terms might be right or wrong. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, at least yeah. that level. Where you're like, I saw, we saw some statement from some guy and uh, in that room of people, everyone was like, oh, what a bad, like whatever, what a shitty thing to say. And I was like, uh, my first reaction was, I don't know where he's coming from. Yeah. Culture is or what is his life, maybe in his world, this is fine. But I didn't feel like saying it because everyone will be like, oh, uh, whatever, you can't, this is absolutely, you can't say this thing. But I'm like, maybe in his village, it's normal to say this. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. I keep, I, so that's why I'm very, very uh, interested in knowing from you about, you know, the, this embracing the fact that you can or cannot have uh, strong opinions uh, or have few, a few the few uh and in general like the joy of skepticism sometimes man uh, uh kb i cannot i can't tell you how i hard relate with every single statement you made like hard relate I, i'm exactly that kind of person like i um i i'm very open to all perspectives generally and um i used to think the same thing i used to, i used to, i was complaining about this a lot to a lot of people i said that i don't have very many strong opinions I'm, i i used to be extremely uh, envious of people who had them because they seem they seem so much more assured of reality they seem to have a, a grasp on things or at least their own personal preference is so strong on the particular thing that it's it's like it's like they have so much more confidence and and uh, and it feels like they've thought through everything so much more and i used to think that shit i don't have that like i wish i had that i wish i could ha- also display such a strong emotion for that thing but every time i thought of a thing i used to always also start i used to be at the center of the circle mm. rather than at one of the corners of a square where you can see like you start seeing the whole perspective rather than the one side of it right and uh that's what used to happen to me and for the longest time i used to feel like oh shit what is this and then funnily enough i read a book Okay, it's a it's a book called How to Live, the biography of Michel de Montaigne. Okay, and um, Michel de Montaigne, for those of you uh, who may not have met this person in in literature, he is the author of a book called Essays, and he wrote this in the fifteen hundreds and fifteen hundreds, sixteen hundreds, and he was um, a skeptic. Okay, skepticism came from uh, like all great models of philosophy from Greece. And there was a guy called Piro, who was the father of this particular branch of skepticism. And what was interesting about this was that, you know, there's a very famous line by Socrates. Okay, the line is that all I know is that I know nothing. Mm -hmm. And the skeptics took it one further. They said, all I know is that I know nothing. And I'm not even sure about that. (laughs) <laughs> so I was reading this book and I was reading about how Michel de Montaigne was writing all of these things and he had so the interesting thing about the essays is that he wrote them at different points in his life about the same topic so he wrote one bit about it say for example the topic is love so he's written his thoughts about it when he was 37 and then he came back to it when he was 50 and then after that and and unlike what most people would do, he didn't edit these portions. He left them in. So when you read this book, you meet different Montagnas and you see different perspectives on the same topic. And that's what it feels like to me that uh, a strong opinion is in some ways a limited opinion because it there are a thousand different factors that come in and and opinions change and you will not, it's amazing how much we have the capacity to contradict ourselves and we don't realize it, right? People call it hypocrisy, but I just call it 
having different perspectives at different times there's that line by uh, walter Whit- walt whitman uh, where he says that I, I i contradict myself yes i do because i contain multitudes i'm butchering that phrase but mm-hmm. essentially the sentiment is is what i resonate with um i i don't have there are some things i have um, uh, very strong opinions on and they are obviously born out of experience mm. that you go through a thing or you um coming back to one other theme that we talked about which is aging so and through aging you also find out the themes of your own life mm. right and when you figure out the themes of your life you will have opinions on these things that's that's that that is how you know you progress in life and which is to say that you don't it's not like when we say that we don't have strong opinions it's that we don't have any opinions of course we do have opinions but there is this capacity to constantly also see other perspectives um like for example i don't know if this happens to you but i find it very difficult to be rude to people because like immediately i think of what is their perspective like i'm sure there must be a bunch of things going wrong in their life for them to behave like this like there is a benefit of doubt that you start giving to people because like you just don't feel strongly enough it's like it's all right man it happens like so there's a little bit of um i think flexibility or uh, adjustability that is there and i think for me at least it's an amazing source of peace of mind yeah it's an unbelievable source of peace of mind because you don't get bothered by the hundreds thousands of millions of things that can at any point in time yeah. derail your mood and your emotion and your vibe yeah. right it's just you're like just roll with it whatever the fuck who who cares who cares yeah. you know yeah. um I, and i think it, it's a um it is a perspective right? that's why there are times of course there are times when you need to take a strong stand of course mm-hmm. right by the 8th month of you sending an invoice you can't be like hey it's cool oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to take a stand <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but but uh, i would say that a lot of things or the majority of things in life you don't need to get that bothered about and if you do then it diminishes your own uh enjoyment of life so yeah. so you and and yeah. the truth always exists in between um two very different points of view and it's always going to be somewhere along a continuum so yeah. you might as well embrace that and and not not try to have that tug of war where you're trying to pull it onto your side it's it's all right it's always going to be nebulous so true i'll just take that small example that you gave in the middle about the peace of mind thing and i think that has helped so much um yeah. for example if you plan a day that you know you and someone you go out for dinner it's a simple thing that you do in life but just the steps that it entails uh if uh, it it can ruin your day right for a normal person but the person that we are talking about and your i remember every time i've gone out theek hai traffic hai koi baat nahi gaane se bol lete hain you reach and like uh, waiting hai koi baat nahi chai pi lete hain bahar aur nahi you know get call nipta jate hain then you enter and like uh, food is okay like uh, stuff so it it very rarely something happens that ruins the day for me you know when i come yeah. back and like man what the hell what is it yeah. how kaisa butter chicken tha yaar wo yaar it it never happens and you're like okay maybe this is giving me a lot of <laughs> peace in life just to be like i fully agree with that i fully agree with that like most most times even if i'm in traffic or whatever it's annoying a little bit for sure but there's always like a hundred other things that you can do with your time even in that moment um uh i fully fully agree with you like the i think the other thing about us is maybe that we have lower expectations of everything <laughs> you know where you're not expecting the world from things and people like you have to also take reality for what it is sometimes and we're talking only about experiences here that and things are going to sometimes be mind blowing but a lot of times they're just going to be that like that average on the graph and you have to you have to accept it and enjoy it like that's what it is yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, like Buddha said, like uh, the root of all grief is expectation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> life is great okay i just want to quickly talk about uh, our, our last topic uh, which uh, which is i don't somewhat related to this and maybe not related also is this tendency of being a people pleaser oh yeah and you know i when I, when you think deep about it maybe these two things are related maybe these two are not when you don't have like strong opinions so you sometimes tend to accept everyone yeah and in that process you sometimes also want everyone to uh, accept you yeah uh, but this being a people pleaser has of course a lot of advantages but also has a lot of disadvantages i feel in life because uh, you sub- you tend to do things that you otherwise would not do yeah you tend to spend time with people you won't want to yeah uh, and uh, you know generally uh, and within a community it creates other set of complications because you know uh, in office or in a setup where you're like oh tu usse baat karni tu usse baat karni but you know we are go we are so that happens a lot of other things also uh, i think happen because but the other thing that i think the biggest negative of this is that when you hear that you know uh, someone thinks this about you kartik it just it's one of those things that can ruin your day week i don't know what because you're like hey you know because you want to be liked and you're like very recently jokingly uh, you know uh, my friend and i were talking and someone said ki uh, something about success and i said ki perfect level of success mein yaar mein zyada successful ho gaya na people start hating me you know? yeah. <laughs> perfect and yeah. we want optimum level of popularity and followers and success so everyone loves you <laughs> the yeah, moment yeah yeah what again na every room is talking about you like yeah sahi hai begar hai hack hack yeah yeah i want to be but anyway uh, uh, are you a people pleaser do you, do you go I, oh big time and i think the, and now when we're talking about this let me just um, sort of like couch it by saying that this is for me by the way i all of like i have all of these thoughts and ideas but they're all works in progress and the thing that i'm the most work in progress about is this aspect because i've realized that this is the one aspect of me this bhari being a people pleaser aspect which has come in contradiction with most of my other sort of beliefs and it's limited a lot of my ability and beliefs and and things i feel like being a people pleaser i don't know where it comes from single child i don't know i don't know maybe god knows i haven't psychologically evaluated this aspect but i am a people pleaser um part of it is to you know you, you you start by saying that start from the premise that i just want to avoid conflict right i don't want to stir the pot or whatever it is right and so which is why you go with the flow now um that invariably comes in contradiction with a lot of the things that you want to do your personal desires ambitions etc etc and um the thing that i found is that th- there are times when it's been very good for me to do that to kind of like um go with other people's i- opinions and ideas i'll tell you what i mean so when i started off um wanting to be a novelist i was 16 years old and when you're 16 you have ambition you have drive what you don't have is experience so i was just i just wanted to collect as much experience as possible so i would you know whoever had a plan or whatever was going on i would say yes i made friends with all all sorts of types of people and i would mold my personality to everyone else's and i'd be friends with i have a very diverse bunch of friends and i don't i'm i'm not one of those people who holds a birthday party and calls everyone together because because i am different people with these guys and i can't put up that performance with every, with everyone watching it's changed now now i'm a more integrated person but um essentially that was what what it was and i had some of the like you know you've had that experience right where you're like he, someone asks you something you can't say no and then you know you go through that middle phase where you're like shit yaar jana padega karna padega but then you go and you have a great time right you and that happens to me also a lot some of the best plans have been made because i couldn't say no to people yeah, yeah. and i ended up going there and i had a great time i had a blast 
so in that aspect it's phenomenal i don't know how to parse that stuff from the other stuff which is that there is an optimum level and i think this is again it's true for like balance right that thing that of not being an extreme in any sort of way there is that balance which is that you have to be somewhere in the middle right because the opposite end of being not a people pleaser is being a you know those crotchety old people who are like nahi ye mera opinion hai yehi main karta hu aur main kuch nahi karunga i don't give a fuck about anyone else right don't want to be that person either. you don't want to be a you know a karmajan you just want to be like a, that's that sweet spot where you're, you you make allowances for people but you also have your own um i guess when it intrudes into your well being or your whatever your plans are maybe you draw the line um a lot of it i've realized at least for me is it stems from fear unfounded completely in your head imagined fear and um i i i want to have um more of the ability to to just um not be a complete people pleaser uh be in that sweet spot cool uh we can keep talking about it because i had a few yeah. things to say like about confrontation i totally relate with you that i think it also comes from the fact that we just want to avoid conflict and confrontation yeah. and just conversation yeah. we're just like theek hai yaar main jhel lunga yaar ye yeah yeah ha uh, uh, yes yes you're right but just like just ji ha yeah 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 because you know like the opposite of that is there's always one person in the building society who no matter what the agenda of the meeting is they're going to pick a fight right yeah like they want con- confrontation and they thrive in that sort of space like and unfortunately i don't know how to deal with it but over time i've realized that confrontation isn't the problem the mm-hmm. perspective on the confrontation is that mm-hmm. like as long as you're coming to the confrontation because what tends to happen and what i mean by this let me just sort of one one layer i'll just go deeper what tends to happen with the confrontation is that you tend to take it personally mm. especially if you are a person like me you take every confrontation personally that's not true because a lot of confrontation is not personal in nature it's circumstantial and if you can address the circumstance without addressing the person mm. i think it's the best way to confront Uh, anybody and i i think learning that has been it's improved me a little bit but um there's still a long ways to go <laughs> so cool thank you kaushik i mean as as expected intense extensive uh yeah uh, so now we'll move to some fun part which is the rapid fire section where i ask you 10 questions uh and you answer and we go back to those answer in case you feel like expanding or saying more about any answer okay the only rule is that you can't think okay <laughs> yeah because then you know something like you know favorite book yeah answer will change every 5 minutes yeah so yeah 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 whatever yeah. comes to your mind yeah. okay cool yeah. yeah okay rapid fire with kautuk shivat so question number 1 your favorite tis slash sng colleague uh nevil favorite book Uh, what ho by P. G. Woodhouse. Favorite Indian author. Um, Rohit in Mystery. Favorite comedy special. Um, I think uh, I forget the name, but one of the Bill Burr ones. The uh, I don't know the name. I'm sorry. It's it's the one where he's wearing the uh, full sleeve shirt. Uh, yeah, is it Paper Tiger? No, the one. Before. No, 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 no. It was one of the early ones. I forget, but I forget the name. Huh. Okay, so let's go with one. Your favorite Indian comedy special? Uh, favorite Indian comedy special? Uh, I think Biswa Mastadmi. Hmm. Okay, one unpopular opinion that you have in life. Unpopular opinion. Um. I think uh, I don't know if this is popular or not, but unpopular or not, but I I think memes are going to be art. Wow. Okay. 
one app that you recommend to people one app slash website that you recommend to people app slash website uh the one app that okay it's a recent one i i, I really like wordle it's a version of wordle but it's four yeah. wordles at the same time okay uh wordle nice okay favorite indian stand up comedian um karan one thing uh, your favorite thing about being a freelancer favorite thing about being a freelancer um liberty favorite movie jurassic park <laughs> favorite tv show slash web series very uh, mainstream but breaking bad oh yes okay cool we'll just go through all your answer if you feel like you yeah. think like you need to, a few seconds 30 seconds time to explain yeah. uh, your favorite is smg colleague you went with neville yeah okay uh, let me know ha jab bhi whenever you uh, want oh uh, yeah i mean so I, I, okay let me let me let me uh, talk about this one it'll be interesting because so I'll tell you what happens. So the reason, uh, so the thing about favorite is colleague is I am. I think I am the whatever is the you know in chemistry you have these elements that bond with all the other elements, right? Like they're those I forget what they're called. Uh, they're the things that can uh, bond with everything. I'm one of those characters, and I've bond with all the other members more than I think they bond with each other. and at different times i've i'm working with different test members on different projects so if you ask me this question at a different time it will be a different answer <laughs> like for example uh, kv you and i and varun we were doing that um, the prank show that we did yeah 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 oh god yeah that dude that was one of the best fucking things we've done and very few people have seen it and and yeah. I, i think the experience of it was phenomenal yeah. so oh, And if you had asked me the question, then I would have said Varun. Um, when Adar and I were touring with um, with Jokes Without Borders, if you had asked me who's your uh, and when we went to Russia, if you had asked me who's your favorite uh, test member, I'd said Adar. And right now, Neville and I are touring with our uh, show and spending a lot of time with him on the phone. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Neville Chai it is. <laughs> the favorite book you said a uh, P.G. Howard Buddha's book. Are you a uh, like? one of those pg woodhouse fan like yeah 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 i i'm a super fan like i've i've read all all the books um read all the memoirs read all everything and um mem- memoirs sorry memoirs. uh memoirs <laughs> published author so um you know so uh, pg woodhouse the reason i i i bring him up and i've i bring him up every single time ad nauseum uh, because he was the reason i became a writer i read this particular book uh when i was 16 and i was like this is um this is what i want to do in life i want to write a funny book and it's led me down all these garden paths so he's always been like the you know you 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 go out into the world and you do a bunch of stuff and then you come back home and that sort of like uh, the home ground for writing for me is pg woodhouse so yeah your favorite indian author you said rohinton mystery yeah uh okay uh do you uh but who are your favorite other indian authors like do you do you read a lot of indian authors in general i do read indian authors but i don't read as much i will confess uh, as i'd like um manu joseph is another person i really enjoy uh, i really like his novels um and um yeah and there's like i, I find like um you know a lot of a lot of indian authors like they like a like you know um people make fun of the fact that they're very popular and and those kind of things but like i think like it's it's uh, all of it is great as long as people are reading books it's fucking amazing yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah i was recently uh, talking about shetan bhagat with someone and i said all said and done i'll i'll give it to him that it's because of him that a lot of indian yeah. started a lot of us yes uh, you know things. it's it's the ecosystem thing right it's the ecosystem like chetan bhagat creates the big ecosystem in which all the other books get a space um too so yeah 
Okay. Uh, favorite Indian comedy special you went with Bismam Asadmi. Yeah. Why? What do you like? Like, if you just have to say something about Bismam Asadmi. It's um. It's it's got this quality of being very freewheeling, and sort of like, uh, irreverent, which mm-hmm. I really enjoy. Like it's, you know that there's craft involved of. cause there's craft in world and there's uh the technique and all of that stuff but it's also very like fun and like energetic and i thoroughly enjoy that your unpopular opinion is memes will one day be considered art yeah. you want to spend 30 seconds talking about this unpopular opinion <laughs> uh yeah i mean so I'll, i mean so the sort of like the very definition of a meme or the sort of like the origin story of it is that they're supposed to be disposable right but the as time is going by the the complexity of a single image is increasing so much that at some point we are going to create something that's which is going to be beautiful and it's going to be it's going to be aesthetic and it's going to be pleasing and it's going to be meaningful in all the best ways that art is so and also one other thing about it is that my definition of art is that it's a contraction of articulation so if a meme is able to articulate something beautifully then yeah it's it's going to be art so nice uh quadel quadel is something that you are recommending to people i want to spend 30 seconds talking to you about wordle i'm really inspired by uh wordle you know what yeah. i mean yeah 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 just the simplicity of what it is yes uh, that you know this one thing every day so it's not like one of those games that you are addicted to and you're yes. doing candy crush and temple run the whole day and the shareability factor is so simple that you just click and you share yes. and uh, the simplicity and it just amazes me uh, of this thing and it's still it has hooked it's still there like it's still relevant uh, it's still relevant we are still doing it every day for like last few months i'm very like personally very impressed with wordle uh, yeah and and it also ties into that idea of slowness mm, yeah. that you're going to only get one yeah one oh, a day yeah. now you wait so one one a day sorry one a day but and with no like time limit like take your take your time take your time so so <laughs> many days that i just saw and then i i keep it aside thing like yeah. i'll come yeah. back to it later yeah it's beautiful do it today, Yeah. yeah today exactly exactly i was i was just i was uh, talking to siddhi uh, my wife about it um so like the the thing about um, wordle is again that sense of achievement that you get because you have actively used your like brain mm-hmm. right in 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 sort of figuring a thing out and um uh yeah i'm 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 a convert to wordle and i'm i also understand why people want to share it because uh, there is also that thing that मेरे को टीम में मिल गया सो वेरी नाइसली डन योर फेवरेट इंडियन स्टैंड अप कॉमेडियन कनन गिल डू यू वांट टू से व्हाट मेक्स कनन डिफरेंट देन मोस्ट स्टैंड अप कॉमेडियंस आ ही इज ही इज अगेन गॉट अ वेरी डिस्टिंक्ट वॉइस एंड एज अ पर्सन इन सर्च ऑफ इट आई रियली एंजॉय दैट द द फैक्ट दैट लाइक अ पर्सन हैज अ वेरी क्लियर आईडिया ऑफ व्हाट दे आर ऑन स्टेज um आई वुड आल्सो लाइक टू ऐड uh punit panya to the list um if i can because he's also another person who's found his voice and um they're both different in 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 one way which is that um and similar in one way that like there's uh a lot of care that goes into their the writing of both their bits and um and in kanan's case like there's a lot of like uh, and these are all like these are my assumptions um mm. of the work but like i f- i feel like there's a lot of like he takes the serious thing and makes it more flippant than it is and punit stays true to that seriousness and uh, so slightly different but very similar in that sense and i thoroughly enjoy both their work the thing you enjoy about being a freelancer is the liberty which yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so okay we'll take uh, some time one minute each on these next two answers your favorite movie jurassic park Yeah. Uh, talk to us. Talk to us about Jurassic Park. Okay, so before I tell you about Jurassic Park, I have to preface this by saying that the thing I hate about the rapid fire round in general, and I'm not saying that this one in particular, but like the thing is that 
your brain immediately goes to retrieval mode and it never comes up with anything good <laughs> it's just a very primal stupid you know like something that's lodged in your brain for years and generally speaking you're repeating whatever you've said uh on a previous the previous time someone's asked you because you you hate that feeling of being in the spotlight with nothing to say so um jurassic park has been my go to and i think like i think it holds up uh, it's not a, it's not a, it's not the the worst film to say uh because i think my sensibility is that i i enjoy big broad blockbusters but made with craft and thought and yeah. like there's something uh about jurassic park that is it's a perfect mesh of science fiction of emotional storytelling of um of capturing the awe of seeing dinosaurs yeah. in the flesh and blood and i really enjoy that movie I, every like and the reason i i say it as my favorite movie is because i think i've also seen it the most times yeah. because as a kid i loved dinosaurs yeah. and um every time i saw jurassic park every time it, it used to come on star movies like i think on a twice daily basis yeah. so every time i saw it uh, i would stop and and watch it the whole movie start to finish so yeah. i can quote dialogues and stuff so it's yeah, yeah. no i i am with you on the blockbuster but being made well category yeah. those yeah. are also my favorite kind of cinema yeah. like give me give me a, a nice jurassic park over i don't know uh, i don't want to name some I, i know what you mean but <laughs> like, okay uh, i know what you mean like because but, a lot of a lot of the the uh, arty stuff uh it it kind of like takes itself just a little too seriously where it becomes dull so yeah. that that sort of enjoyment that you want from a movie is is lost yeah okay uh last is again my go to answer for my favorite tv show it might change in a few weeks once uh, better call saul oh yeah 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 but my go to answer is also breaking bad so uh Kathu, why do you love Rick Matt so much? That's the, the last question I'm asking you on this episode. In fact, you did you talk you talked about Walt Whitman in the middle, and we yeah, made me think of uh, Breaking Bad then also. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. W W. Uh, I I okay. So I'll I'll tell you what. Like I'll be honest. I came to it very late in life. Um, watched it only during the pandemic. In fact. oh that late in life and i'll tell you why also because like you know that classic thing that happens right where if everyone's talking about something you're like i don't want to see it now fuck it right yeah. so i it took a long time for me to kind of be like chal dekhta hu kya hai and um man <sighs> okay so it's uh, shakespearean in its scope in its ambition in its execution it's um gripping it's um you know it's the right like sort of like it's a gangster story but it's it's a coming of age gangster story that has a tragedy at the end of it like a, it's the whole sweep of the thing and much like um all great art it's a it's a very good simulation of life yeah so and it's so engaging memorable is well shot I, i thought it was um writing wise character wise and you know some of the 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 world building of it is just so well done like i i thoroughly enjoyed it i would have said game of thrones also by the way if it weren't for those last two seasons yeah, yeah. last two seasons really mucked it up but um but, and that's the other thing that you have to say about breaking bad and its credit actually which is that they knew when to stop yeah, yeah. they didn't decide ki aur, aur 6 7 season banate because it's successful so to have that integrity and saying that look let's let's this is the story let's tell it and then um move on and i think that that's done um many favors to its legacy well i will do a separate uh stream very soon where yeah. we can talk about breaking back oh. for us <laughs> and then another stream or better call solve but thank you gautam thank yes. you thank you i had expected i'm i'm just like one of the best conversations i've ever had uh, thank you so much no okay we same same say the pleasure was all mine and 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 genuinely i mean that because you very rarely get to um to to talk about a lot of these things 
uh, with anybody really. So this was a lot of fun. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you. Thank you.